With implication, we have the if then, and it is denoted by this sign, the an arrow like that. And an example with it is is if the one thing will follow the other. So, for instance, I've got this example. If we've got two statements, Tom is in Paris, and the second statement, Q, Tom is in France. Well, the one follows the other. If I say P, if P, then Q. Because if Tom is in Paris, then Tom is in France. So we have that statement. Now the truth table for it is a little bit complicated, um, especially this line over here. And I think at this stage one just needs to remember this. We have, if the one is true, then the other is true. So the implication is true. So that's the situation over here. Tom is in Paris, then Tom is in France, so it's true. Um, then if we get Tom is in Paris and Tom is not in France, that is not true. That's a false statement. Now this one over here, you just got to remember, I think, that when you have the false, then the true follows. Um, it doesn't really make all that sense in this example. Tom is not in Paris. Um, it's that's false, but Tom is in France. I mean, that that is possible, but he could also be elsewhere. But um, let's just accept that. And then obviously the false, false, um, we have Tom is um, not in Paris and Tom is not in France. Well, that's that's possibility to be true. So for this over here, it's really important to um, remember the, the truth table for that. Now we can represent this um, on a Venn diagram also. And basically, it's just the subset. Um, so the Q in the example that I use would be France. And P is a subset of France. Uh, uh, Paris is a subset of France. So it's within France. Now, we also have a more binding one. And this is the if and only if. And it's denoted by the this symbol over here. This is the if and only if. So if you have two propositions... And it's only if both imply the other. Now we've got an example here. A polygon has four sides. A polygon is a quadrilateral. Now, if a polygon has four sides, then it is a quadrilateral. And if a polygon is a quadrilateral, it has four sides. You can see that this follows both ways. You have the polygon is a has four sides, therefore it's a then it's a quadrilateral, that's true. And if a polygon is a quadrilateral, it has four sides. So we can see it works both ways. And in actual fact, our Venn diagram looks something like this. Um, we, we see that this is, they are just equal, equal sets. So we have both of those in the shade, it would be Q and P. Now, we have two things that we call tautologies and contradictions. If we get both being true, we get a tautology. Like, for instance, over here, we, if everything is, is always true regardless of the truth, the truth values, then we have a tautology. So if we have here P and the negation of P, we know that's going to be this, true, false, and false, true. Now, this is our, here is our or, so it's true or, that would be true, and this over here would be also be true, because one of them is true. So this would be the example of a tautology. A contradiction is when they are always false regardless of the truth value. So you always get false, false. So whenever you get all the, the values that are coming out are false, then we have a contradiction. And here we get the situation over here um, where we have P and our, t and our opposite of P, the opposite of P. So we get true, false, and false, true. And we know that both of these for and, this is our and symbol. So for to get an and, they both got to be true. And we know that's not possible. So there you have false, false. And that is a contradiction. Finally, 
we want to look at this over here we have the converse inverse contrapositive uh, of implication so we use the example here a quadrilateral is a rectangle a quadrilateral is a parallelogram now I think uh, you remember that a rectangle is like this it's all got 90 degrees opposite sides are equal like that um, and a parallelogram is similar to a quadrilateral except you don't have the 90 degrees but you have this situation opposite sides are equal and um, they also parallel opposite sides are parallel but you don't have the 90 degrees so we have P a quadrilateral is a rectangle and Q a quadrilateral is a parallelogram so implication um, P follows Q so if we have P then we have Q so if P if P is a rectangle or if a shape is a rectangle then it is a parallelogram and that's true because this would be that we can say that this we could call this a parallelogram also because it has opposite sides which are parallel and opposite sides which are equal so this is true if a quadrilateral is a rectangle then it is a parallelogram but what about the converse the converse is the opposite so here we're going to have if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram then it is a rectangle so it is Q follows P now we know that this would be false in this case because we may have this but we can't say that that is going to be um, we can't call that a rectangle so this is the converse is when we switch around our symbols our our statements in the other direction the inverse is is stated by this when we find the negation of each so if a quadrilateral is not a rectangle then it is not a parallelogram so you see we have the negation of each this is the what we call the inverse and then finally we get the contrapositive where we have if a quadrilateral is not a parallelogram then it is not a rectangle so that is when you take the inverse of the second one and you put it to the inverse of the of the first so here we have our inverse of Q it follows our inverse of P so this is the contrapositive so these terms you need to know and be able to understand